he makes a decision to, to adopt one of them. That's, uh, um, that's fine, right? And uh, we just need to uh, be aware of the fact that we're not reducing complexity by doing it. We're actually pushing complexity to somebody else's the table, and you do it. Or we as architects, as developers, we have to learn to actually do operations. Developers these days, when they see something like this, they like to be happy for it. They don't care about security, they don't care about access control, they don't care about logging, traffic monitoring. I just, I just call my business logic and I, and I kind of expect the infrastructure to do things for me. Right? Is it wrong expectation? No, it's not. But I need to be able to run this infrastructure to do this for me. And, um, um, there is, there is more to it. Uh, the, the key message here is that you will never have one of these flavors from the previous slide. You will have uh, some service mesh, maybe, that you, you, you experimented with and built. You will have actually more than one service mesh. You will have mesh of meshes. You will have um, standalone microservices. You will have to connect them in some way. Uh, hopefully to expose them to, to, your, to your consumers, and hopefully this exposure will happen to some kind of API management platform in a, in a controlled way. But again, you will not only have the new fancy stuff and service management microservices, there will be models. You will not break down your HR system into microservices and have them deliver it up. No one will let you have it. You will have, you will have models and you will have other things. So uh, this all has impact on how we do API management, right? That, that is all I'm actually going to. That <coughs> thinking that we can do all these things, uh, microservices, service mesh, serverless, by using the tools from the past that we've been using with, with Monday is not reasonable, right? Uh, new use cases, they would sometimes require new tools. Can you do this the old way with the old tools? Yes. If you have a hammer in your hand, and everything looks like a nail, right? So you were able to use your virtual chart to do everything, right? I talked to, to customers who, uh, who were uh, you know, arguing with me that they can do APA management doing the other coding. Yes, they can. It will take them a few years because we have done it. And uh, we have a platform right now that people can buy. Um, so, that's not uh, the key. So the key is to have something that is fit for purpose. And when we start with one of the components of the APA management platform, which is APA Gateway, we'll have the usual APA Gateway platform where you have something in the backend and we expose it uh, in a controlled way to the consumers, internal or, or external. But um, when we embrace these new platforms, we will want to have these guys talk to each other as well. So um, how do you do this? Again, you could probably do this using the same gateway, but actually this, this line base slightly different, uh, slightly different pattern of usage. So uh, <coughs> we stole the terminology from security people here uh, when they differentiate between north-south traffic, means the traffic that has the potential from coming from outside or going outside, so it has to be secured in a, in a, in a different way from the east-west traffic that is deemed to be internal only, right? So we don't need to, um, we don't need to uh, do all the things that we do over there, maybe. Um, you could argue that, you know, I could handle this communication with the gateway over there. Yes, you could. Uh, but would it be a proper, a good solution? Let's take this analogy. When, when in our houses, we have our main entry door, which is probably something very secure, powerful. We probably have you know, more than one lock, uh, and you have like more than one key to, to enter. Once you pass this door, when you want to enter the kitchen, you, you may have a door to the kitchen, but it will probably not have the same kind of a door. Right? Um, when you when you go to uh, to your toilet, to your bathroom, you, you probably have a light door over there, but there will be a lock for no one who enters, and you will have an old window in this in this thing. But another thing is that when you go when you pass your main entrance and you want to go to the kitchen, you will not be required to exit the house 
enter it again and then it will be kitchen. Which would be the case if we start using this the equation many this communication. Right? So these new use cases they uh, in the Monday uh, the EPA management platform we have something we call it micro not only we call it a micro gate, but micro micro calls it micro gate. So uh, the characteristics of micro gateways are such that it has to run everywhere because if you embrace microservices, serverless, <coughs> service mesh, you will have developer teams that uh, write code in their preferred language. They run it whenever whatever they want to run it, and Docker and Kubernetes, maybe serverless. So you need a micro gateway there that will, you know, it will run on your own. So it will be self-sufficient if you go up at them in every 30 months. And it will have to have the capability of federating with your main gateway because you will have the need to, to, to put some control over what's happening in this in this uh, happy service mesh um, space. <coughs> um, do you know this joke about two APIs entering the bar? <laughs> in the silence? Silent fall because they don't talk to each other. <laughs> yeah, so th that's that's what happens when you know microservices communication. They expose APIs, but they don't talk to each other, right? So you might have heard in some other sessions today that, that there are solutions that make these microservices talk to each other. The sidecar proxies, right? Yeah. And the sidecar concept is like now this is this is the other side. This is the sidecar, right? The sidecar mm -hmm. concept is one that you will have. One model of a sidecar that will work with uh, many motorcycles and they will bring some additional capability to you. Uh, in, in, in our world, you know, the, the application, the microservice we build will be will be the motorcycle, <coughs> while the, the micro gateway will be the sidecar proxy that is doing the heavy lifting for application developers. Like this application developer will not need to worry about security, throttling, logging, service discovery, because when we are introducing the architecture, the first thing I need to do, I need to talk to some kind of service registry, consumer, retail, or whatever else, to ask where is my endpoint today and call it, right? This guy will handle all this to the heavy things for the developers um, to let them do happy coding. So this is, this is the infrastructure doing the magic and freeing the developers from, uh, from the burden of day-to-day -day operation. So uh, <coughs> that's the impact of one of the impacts of uh, service mesh microservice architectures on the platforms we're building. You will still need the proper API gateway where, where you as the architect, as the developer, play a role of API product manager, where you shape your APIs, prepare them for, um, for consumption, for usage, where you check on analytics to understand how you're being used, to make decisions about the role of the product, whether I should discontinue the API or maybe uh, uh, I need to increase the, the capacity and things like this. So again, you will have more of a <coughs> It's not always uh, one thing or one aspect of your distributed architecture. Um, so in addition to the standard API gateway, the API portal that they haven't mentioned, which is uh, you know, the place where the relationship between consumer and the provider is happening. In addition to this, you will need a micro gateway that, that's, that is doing the heavy lifting in the distributed architecture